Well, hello guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to something quite different for the channel. We are switching gears at the lighter side of RC and we are doing an EDF plane. So this is gonna be a pretty cool, quick, fun build. Uh, this is a MIG uh, 15, I think is what it is. Uh, it's a Hobby King fiberglass kit and uh, we are putting some top notch equipment in this EDF. So thanks for, uh, for watching, stay tuned and we'll dive in to this build. Now, when we were doing the shop video, uh, and just uh, when I think I, when I did the floor, we did the video just before I moved into the, the new shop space. And uh, the one thing that I showed you guys was the cockpit that my buddy Joe made. Uh, I 3D printed this with his resin printer, painted it all, installed it, and it is phenomenal, uh, the detail on this thing. So but uh, he did an amazing job. And again, thank you, Joe, for uh, taking care of this. Um, Eric's seen this already, he's seen pictures and he absolutely loves it. Eric's the owner of this plane. So in this video, just like all the other videos, I would like to cover the equipment that we're gonna be installing in this plane. Uh, we've top notch on everything. Uh, obviously some of it's gonna be opinionated based on what you think uh, is better than others, but top notch equipment in this plane. So let's take a look at what we're putting in this little MIG and uh, talk a little bit more about the equipment before we start the build. All right, so this is the manual for it. I printed this off the internet. Uh, so we got a MIG-15 EDF model. Here's the specifications for it. Uh, 90 millimeter fan. And uh, then of course you go into the, um, the actual build portion of the aircraft. Don't know how much of this I'm going to reference, but uh, we'll see how that works out. But let's take a look at all the equipment we're gonna be using. And uh, we got some pretty cool things here. Okay, so the actual fuselage itself is all fiberglass, which is great. Uh, you know, it seems fairly light, not too crazy. Of course our cockpit, uh, we uh, got that made by Joe, my 3D printing guy, and we could just do a bust in this because we don't have any room because of the intake, right? So uh, he did a great job uh, getting as much detail in there as possible, which is, is absolutely nuts. So thank you, Joe. Um, so here we've got our wings. Uh, we are, uh, we've got little CA hinges as well too. And so those need to be hinged. We've got our flap. You can see the cutouts here for the flap servo is right here. The aileron servo is right there. Now these are wood wings, foam wings, and they've been uh, covered with covering. And I think they've been painted uh, based on what I'm seeing here. So it looks like white covering that's been painted silver. So we'll see how that works out. Hopefully it's durable. I mean, it is Hobby King. Uh, but hopefully that we can make that work. Now landing gear wise, we've got the cutouts here for the gear. We do have some, uh, some air up, spring down, spring down, uh, sorry, spring up, air down gear for this that we've ordered as well. So, um, but we've got our two wings there and then we've got our, uh, our surfaces. So I think those are going to be the elevator surfaces, horizontal stab, that's the rudder. And then we've got a couple miscellaneous little parts here. So let's dive into the equipment of this aircraft. Okay, so step number one, radio. Now Eric flies with an IX-20, so we're gonna be setting this up on the shop radio, the shop spectrum radio, and sending him the program. So that's the radio we're gonna be using for this aircraft. Now, speed controller for the aircraft, we have a Spectrum Avian. Now this is 120 amp. Uh, there's the specifications for it right there. Now we are gonna be using this plane with a 8S setup. That was part of the, how we got this, uh, everything we've come to. So that's what we're gonna be powering this with is two four cell batteries. So, but that's the speed control that we'll be using for the plane. 
Receiver, we'll be using the AR10360T. Uh, that's what's gonna be the brain of the operations. Uh, we've got a lighting kit here. I think this is probably the one that came with the plane. Now they're a little bit, uh, a little bit kind of chunky, so we'll see how those all work out. And we've got uh, the actual lighting controller, which is nice to see. And then a bunch of wiring there as well too. So we'll get this thing lit up like a Christmas tree and make it look pretty cool. Obviously we're fairly limited on space on those little wings, but we'll see what we can do with those guys. Okay, servos. So basically I got the best JR micro servos that we could get the uh, DS389HVs, high voltage ones, and uh, pretty nice little servos, good specs. We'll be running this at uh, hopefully around 7.4 volts, so we'll be getting uh, about a kilogram of force. Anyways, nice little servos for an application like this. Okay, so our landing gear for this plane, we got some spring down air up landing gear. Now I ordered these from Spring Air. Um, took a little while to get here, but uh, it was nice to be able to, uh, to get these tiny little gear. I'm hoping they fit in the wing. That's my only concern with these things. Uh, they're fairly hefty. I told them what plane I was going to be installing these in, and I think we'll be able to make these work. Uh, now they do have, uh, we're going to have to probably increase the cutout size here, but we'll see what we, uh, what we can do. We wanted retractable landing gear on this aircraft and uh, these were basically the smallest high quality ones that we could get. Now we could have got some really small electric uh, foamy type things, but uh, I'd rather go with something like this because it's more durable, stronger, better built, and uh, I think it's gonna be more reliable with a whole bunch of flights on it. So there's gonna be quite a bit of thinking with this stuff. I don't know if we'll be using the stock air cylinder or if we'll go something smaller, so we'll see. That's one of the downsides with the MIGs is you basically don't have a lot of room for mounting miscellaneous stuff. Uh, so that needs to be kind of on the forefront of your brain when you're, uh, when you're putting these things together. We have an afterburner light from RC Geek. So they, uh, they basically custom built this for us based on the motor that we're using and uh, it goes on the end of the in-runner motor and uh, it's gonna be a pretty crazy uh, afterburner setup. So obviously the, the light shines right through the tailpipe so it's gonna be really slick, really nice setup. All right, and the last beautiful piece is this fan setup from Schubler Composites, a really, really nice quality setup for this aircraft. Uh, again, when we uh, designed this, we were going with a 8S setup, which is exactly what, uh, what we got here. So beautiful fan, very, uh, very high-end fan. Here's the model that it is. And uh, there's the, uh, the motor assembly. So it's gonna be a pretty kick butt setup, I think. So that is all of the equipment going into this aircraft. Now, totally different obviously than putting a turbine aircraft together, but the functions, the systems, the assembly methods, we are trying to build a quality aircraft that's reliable, flies for a long time and the owner gets many, many years of use out of it. So that's the ultimate goal. Now, one thing we need to be mindful of with this aircraft is to keep it light. So these little MIGs have a tendency to end up tail heavy. So we need to be mindful of that. Our batteries are gonna be tucking in the nose section here. So we need to be mindful of the kind of battery size that we can get and obviously equipment placement for other things going into this aircraft. So we want to keep it as light and small as possible. You know what I'm thinking about instead of using that large air, air cylinder, not that it saves weight, but uh, in the uh, good old days, turbines used to have onboard propane. So we could be able to possibly use this little uh, 
tiny air cylinder, a propane cylinder, and all, it, all it's doing is acting as an air holding cylinder, this is gonna be a lot easier to mount in the aircraft than that big one, right? So just, we wanna be mindful of those kind of things and uh, trying to keep this thing as doggone light as possible, but still making it really stinking cool. Okay, so step number one in the manual is starting from the back end, working forward. So that's probably what we're most likely gonna do is we'll kind of follow the manual, uh, vary a little bit and, uh, and see what we can do. So here's an equipment list uh, that they've in, uh, included in the manual. Obviously the equipment's not included. Five channel radio and receiver, we've got that covered. Suitable motor and speed controller, no problem. Servo extension wires, no problem. Micro servos, we got lots of those, those nice JR ones. Got lots of this stuff, lots of that, lots of that. So we should be good to go. Step number one, let's get the, uh, the build table cleaned up and we are going to start looking at the rudder portion and getting that hinged. Okay guys, so step number one that we need to do on a plane like this is we need to set up a new aircraft in the radio and bind the receiver to the aircraft. Now the reason you wanna do that is just so you can center servos, all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of one of the first steps that I'd like to do on something like this. So now this receiver, I've never used one of these before. I'm not a huge uh, uh, spectrum guy, so, uh, but it comes with a decent instruction book and it's got all the different AS3X and all that kind of stuff all built in. So lots of good technology there. And then we've also got the uh, Avian 120 amp brushless ESC. This thing is a bad mamma jamma. That's uh, Pretty, uh, pretty crazy looking thing. So definitely need to read the instructions on this guy. We've got uh, some nice big battery plugs and a bunch of different things going on. So I need to figure all that stuff out as well too. So actually gonna read the instructions right there. All right, so first step here guys, we are gonna be mounting our rudder servo. Now uh, in the manual, it shows a picture with this output slot uh, closer to the rear of the plane or the aft of the plane. So that is the right cover for, or the correct cover for the rudder. So what I've done here is uh, put the servo in the rudder channel and we're going to be uh, mounting this servo onto the actual cover as well. So the manual talks about mounting the servo to the actual surface here, but our depth is, is too deep. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount the rudder servo to the cover, then we've got our spacing all figured out. And if it sits close enough, we'll put another piece of adhesive or something on the other side where this rudder surf, uh, servo is gonna be contacting the fuselage. So anyways, we've plugged in the servo. We're now centered on the servo. You can see here if I operate the rudder stick and we wanna change that servo arm out to the longer one. And what we'll do is we'll get this uh, set up so we get the most square output on that servo arm. Okay, so we've got the slot cut out there, and that's all fine. We've got the horn mounted to the servo using Loctite, of course, and uh, we are ready to install this. We have uh, sanded the servo down a little bit so the epoxy has something to stick to. And now we will get that mounted to the low. cover. And in case you're wondering, transmitter battery is low. All right, so I'm still working on the back end here, guys. I haven't put the rudder servo in yet. I'm just kind of doing some figuring here. Uh, I had to pick up a bunch of control stuff, right? I'm not sure if the kit uh, did not come with any or if it's been misplaced. But anyways, we've got uh, a bunch of things now as far as options goes to set this aircraft up. Now there's a couple things here that we need to think about. So number one, if we mount the uh, elevator servos where they're supposed to go, so in this pocket right here, um, we're going to be coming out of the servo like that, which is fine. The problem, is, so this elevator here, or horizontal, we're just gonna lay it like this. We would be coming at this surface, kind of at that angle. And what happens there is when this bends, okay, you've got some funky geometry going on here. So the only way to make that work on this end is to use a ball joint. Now, 
I do have to double check and make sure that these horns would accept the ball joint. So that's option number one. The other option we have is to mount the servo inside the horizontal stabs. Now, benefit of that is we can make the hinge run perpendicular to the hinge point on the surface, which will make for really nice geometry. The downside is that we've got the carbon spar that goes in right here in this area. And that means that we either need to mount the servo right here, which might be okay, or mount it here. I should put that at the right angle like that. The problem with mounting it there is you're almost right at the base. We'd, want, we'd almost want to have that control horn over there. So mounting it in this area makes more sense. And our spar is going to come like that. So that might work. And then we just need to come up with a path for that wire coming out here. So that would be the only downside to this whole setup like this. So I need to do a little bit of figuring here and try and get that sorted. Now we the rudder's not hinged, so I did pick up some uh, Robart small hinges as well, two hinge pins. So that's what we're going to end up using on the rudder. The other surfaces have the CA hinges, which are fine. Uh, the hobby store didn't have any CA hinges, and we also don't have any slots cut here. So uh, just more simple to use pins on the rudder. So. While I'm thinking about how we're going to deal with this elevator stuff, I think the next thing we're going to deal with is the, the rudder hinging itself, and uh, we'll get that taken care of. All right, guys, so I have used Gorilla Glue on the pins that go inside the actual rudder surface itself. Now, Gorilla Glue is a polyurethane material. I've talked about this in my turbine aircraft builds, but uh, to make this stuff activate, uh, it needs moisture. Now you don't need to put moisture in there, but it's helpful. Uh, so what I do is I've just got a bottle of water in the shop. Uh, I drilled my holes inside the vertical surface, the actual rudder surface, put uh, a little bit of, of water in there, put the Gorilla Glue in there, put the pins in there, and you can already see it starting to expand. Uh, I did put lubricant, just a drop of light oil on the pins. And then we'll uh, we'll just pop that uh, Gorilla Glue out when it's uh, when it's all cured, and that'll loosen everything up. Now we do need to glue the uh, pins that go in the actual vertical stab itself, and for that I'm going to be using high saw, and I'm just uh, mixed up a little bit of 20 minute high saw here. This is the two in one stuff, and the 20 minute high saw it sets up pretty quick, but it'll take uh, take quite a quite like a full 24 hours to actually. Uh, cure fully, but uh, this will be a nice way to get this uh, those pins all stuck in place. So the pins, we have good access from the uh, the actual servo openings there. So I'll just put some of the high saw over top of the pins, and uh, the rudder will be set. All right, so I've just given this a bit more thought here, and what I've done is just uh, traced out how far the uh, support here, a carbon rod goes into the surface, marked the end of it there, and there you can see with the little dots. So I'm going to give that a bit more thought, and while I'm thinking about that, I'm going to mount the rudder servo onto the cover. So uh, I did snip off those mounting tabs right there because they were getting close to the edge and they would just interfere. So I'm going to mix up some high saw, get that mounted and clamped in place, and let that cure while we're giving some more thought to these guys. All right, so pretty much decided what we were gonna do here with the servos and I just jumped in and did it. So I traced out these servos uh, on the horizontal stabs and uh, I matched them up as best as I could between the two surfaces. And we did pretty much a trace of the servo and uh, then what I did was I kind of when I actually cut that first one out, I kind of just over-exaggerated it a little bit and came back at angles here instead of following the curve of the servo. So you might look at this and say, oh, now everything's weakened. Well, it's just a foam piece covered in balsa, so not a big deal. So what we're gonna do is we're basically gonna glue this servo in place. We're gonna put a piece of silver um, 
uh, trim tape over top of it so it's going to disappear and uh, actually goes like that and then we'll just have the horn sticking out and it's going to be awesome so uh, should be no structural issues there the spar or the main support comes into here with this all glued into place will be good so i'm just going to hollow this out enough so i can get this servo sitting in there comfortably and uh, it's going to be a better solution with uh, with the control horns and everything going nice and straight and we can just use a nice clevis setup so it'll be nice and strong and zero issues with funny angles on those elevator servos all right, so we've carved out all the white foam in this area. Uh, something to remember when you're dealing with this kind of stuff is our CA hinges. You don't want to use regular CA because that will melt the uh, white styrofoam. So make sure you're using foam safe CA in this situation. So the next thing we did here is we drilled a hole at this angle right there to run the servo line. Now, we don't want to drill this hole too big, so I've drilled it just uh, big enough to run the wire through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the wires from the servo end. Now this servo end uh, attached to the servo will be long enough to use as the connector for the surface itself. So that all works out good. Uh, we just need to get this wire through the foam. So uh, what we're going to do is just use a little uh, knife or a pick, pop those guys up, pull the wires out, and then we'll just use a wire, feed it through there, tape it on, and pull those uh, wires through so we can get that all dealt with. All right, so we got the wire run through. That worked out perfect. And as far as the fit goes, it is absolutely awesome. Now there's just, I'll try and show you guys here, just a bit of the tab sticking up right there in the middle of the screen. So we can sand that down and the servo will be pretty much perfectly mounted in there and not protrude at all. So that's gonna work out awesome. We're gonna do a bit of sanding there. And the other thing we need to do is we need to uh, mount the servo arm. So we're gonna to need to open this up a little bit and we're gonna end up using the, uh, probably the larger servo arm here, the four one and uh, and we'll get that installed. We'll plug this in and get it centered and uh, then we will be ready to glue this servo in place. All right, and if you're finding the channel for the first time, guys, um, generally the way I like to do these things is I like to do one surface at a time and that makes repeating it on the other side uh, a little bit easier. So I know there'll be some of you that have seen the channel many times and some of you this may be the first time you have stumbled across the channel. So anyways, that's kind of the way that I find I have the best success with uh, with setting up aircraft like this, especially on the main wings. It's nice to get everything sorted out, all your measurements done, and then you can kind of work on the other one at the same time. So we've got the servo centered. Uh, we didn't do anything in sub trim. What we did was use the servo arm and pick the one that fits the best. And uh, we cut the rest off and sanded it down. So now we have the servo ready to be installed. So I just got to check and make sure that we've got enough space here. We still do need to sand that down a little bit. So we're good that way towards the surface and our, actually our, our, our surface is moving the correct direction. Back elevator goes towards the surface which lifts the elevator up so that's good. Uh, but we do need to get rid of some more material in this area right here so the servo can move the other direction. So we'll just pop the servo out, do that, and uh, trim that little bit of the tab off as well. All right, so hinges have been glued with CA, and so those are done. Uh, last thing to do here is mount the servo. So I'm gonna do a couple things. I'm gonna use E6000 on the, uh, the wood, so the, uh, the balsa wood where the servo goes. So we're gonna put a Nice healthy amount of that down. That's gonna be the primary thing that holds the servo in place. And then when that's installed, then what we'll do is we'll put some, probably some CA around the, the servo, but that will be plenty. Uh, when it comes down to it, that E6000 is uh, extremely strong stuff and that'll have no problem holding that servo in place. So that should work 
perfect. So what we're gonna do for now is I'm just gonna put some weight on this guy or a clamp and uh, we'll get that clamp down, let that, uh, that set. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on the other wing or the other elevator and get it set up just like this guy. All right, so it's the next day guys and we have the, uh, just took the clamps off and our elevator servos are all mounted. Now, one of the downsides with this Hobby King kit is it's been pretty uh, well voiced out there is the paint that they've painted over top of the white covering is really terrible. Like it's just, it comes off no problem. So we do have a bunch of touch-ups to do. In an area like this, we're gonna be putting our silver sticker tape or whatever it's called over top of these areas. So that won't be an issue. But in an area like the rudder here, which I, uh, peeled the glue out, obviously the glue took with it some of the paint. So we do have some touch-ups here to do as well too, but our rudder is all hinged and doing very well. So next thing to do here is we are going to get the control horn and everything set up for the elevator. Now I showed you already in a previous clip, this is what we're gonna be using, the uh, one half A control horns from Dubro, which are these guys right there. And uh, we're gonna be mounting these obviously on the actual surface itself. We're probably gonna be using a clevis to put these guys together, at least that's my initial plan here. So we'll see how that all works out. But uh, I'm gonna kind of rig these things up. I'll see what the best solution is. And uh, I will sh obviously show you guys what we come up with. All right guys, so um, we're gonna have to be a little bit creative here with the elevators. Now what I initially wanted to do is I wanted to take a pair of golden clevises like this and do them like that. But unfortunately those are gonna to be too long to fit in between the two control surfaces. So one of the alternatives we have is to use this uh, servo mount. I can't remember the number on these guys, but uh, basically use these guys along with one of the Z-Bends. Now I did a testing on uh, a lot of different pieces like this, ball joints, golden clevises, and things like that. And these actually performed quite well uh, in the test, and I was quite surprised. So we may go with these guys, I think, and we'll probably put them on the uh, this control surface here. One of the critical things is we want to have some sort of adjustment here, and uh, I think I would rather use this um, to have the adjustment versus using a Z-Bend on one side and using a golden clevis soldered to the other side. Um, yeah, I think that's gonna be a, a better scenario to have the adjustability with these guys. So, so one way to line these guys up is take a ruler and lay it against your servo arm and then you can just slide the control horn on the surface against the ruler and now we've got a nice square surface to uh, to deal with. Now we do need to keep in mind that if we're going to be using the z-bend like this we want to make sure that we're fairly straight and if we put that guy in there we'll end up being straight. So that's kind of the right spot for it right there. We're going to tuck the edge all the way up to the edge of the surface so that our holes are right over the pivot point and that makes for good geometry. And then what we'll do is we just need to get this mounted kind of temporarily in place. So what I'm doing is just putting a hole in there and then we'll take one of these small screws <clears throat> and just screw this guy in place. And we'll be taking this back out and putting it back in, but I wanna get this set up and mounted so that we can cut the silver skin off of the perimeter of that control horn. So we can also use some CA and glue that control horn down, but that's kind of what we're looking for. And uh, I think it's gonna work out great. So now what I'll do is I'll take my X-Acto knife and just cut around that area and then we'll be able to peel the silver out and glue this guy down and screw it down. All right guys, so we pretty much have everything set up here. This is just a temporary or uh, not complete setup. So we've got our quick connector uh, in the horn here and it's, there's no uh, fitting or anything holding it in the other side, but I do have that cinch down. And the reason for that is I wanna make sure that we can get enough control throw 
on this guy. So, this is the left elevator. So as far as movement goes, that looks really good. So we've got tons of movement there. So the manual doesn't give us any control throws, but uh, from what I've been reading, if we go around 10 centimeters, uh, sorry, 11 millimeters, which is a centimeter, that's kind of what we're looking for here, which I think we're getting way more than that right now. Yeah, we're getting almost double that. So actually what I might do is I might uh, move the L-bend down closer to the servo just to get better torque out of it. Get more push out of that servo. Just remember the closer you are to the output shaft of the servo, the less movement and more torque you will get on the, from the servo. And then now if you go in that same hole, which is the second one, second one from the surface, so right there, we're kind of centered there. So there we go, still tons of movement and uh, that should work peachy. Now this uh, servo is being powered right now at 6.4 volts because we're using just a life battery to test these guys out. Uh, these are high voltage servos, so we can run uh, you know, 8, 8.4 volts out of them, which will also increase the amount of force they have. But uh, that looks like we got plenty there. So. Um, so we can trim this off a little bit as well too. I'm just gonna leave this stuff all as it is for now and uh, then what we're going to do is we will get, uh, as we progress in this, uh, in this build, we'll get things more dialed in. So now that we know that that is going to work, we're going to put our little keepers on here. Now there is two style of keepers that come on this. Uh, so there's the metal one and then there's the plastic one. The plastic one is kind of your temporary or really light duty one. The metal one is more... Uh, more holding power. So that's the one we're gonna use on this and we're just uh, squish those over the end and the little, uh, the little uh, nipple from the, uh, the keeper goes in that little plus symbol there. All right guys, so elevators are both done, complete, ready to be installed. And uh, I've done a couple things here. So number one, drilled some larger holes in the anti-rotation pin locations. And we are using a uh, large carbon rod. I'm not sure of the diameter, but it's a uh, larger size than the stock holes. So those are done. Also added some holes right here, some slots for the servo lines to go into the fuselage. So those things are all ready to, uh, to be installed. Now there's a little bit of play on the surface side. And the reason for that is so we can match these guys up. Um, the, large stock hole is fixed. Uh, there's a little bit of play there, but we do have also some play now in the front so we can get the surface, the incidents matched up um, so they're, they're matching and equal and everything. So, so those are ready to be installed. Um, rudder servo is ready to be installed, so we don't need to worry about that right now. We can do that after we do the elevators. And the next step for the elevators is we want to get our servo leads done up. Now what we're using on this aircraft is we're gonna use power box wire and it's not the maxi wire, it's the normal power box wire. So on the normal power box wire, all the wires are the same gauge. So they're all kind of a smaller gauge. On the maxi wire, uh, the blue and the red, that that has the power going through it. Those are a, a thicker wire, the white's still the same. So because this is just a little EDF, we're not, uh, not worried about signal strength or current 
amount or handling capabilities. That's why we're going with the regular power box wire to try and save weight. So what I need to do is I need to put two female connectors on these ends, get them uh, mounted to the elevator surfaces so we can feed those through. Now the elevators themselves, we're gonna glue these into place. Now I'm a little bit concerned with gluing those elevators in place because that's gonna increase our shipping box size slightly when it goes to the owner. But I wanna get these guys set up because they're pretty finicky and I don't wanna have any issues uh, later on. So that's why I wanna get those surfaces mounted. The wings though, we are gonna leave those unmounted and uh, we'll get them all planned out and set up and everything. So when the owner gets this plane, all he has to do is put some high saw against here, glue those things together tape them in place so they're all lined up and uh, the plane will be done. All right, so we've done a little bit of prep here on the receiving surface on the fuselage. So I took a flat sanding block and we've sanded this down on both sides. So that is step number one for joining these guys together. Second thing we've done is we've roughened up the carbon rods a little bit because those are gonna get glued into the fuselage, into the surfaces, all that kind of stuff. And uh, the receiving points here, so the main spar, main uh, rod, actually has a wood pocket uh, inside the surface there. I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but. Um, so that's where the, the main rod goes, this rod. So we're gonna make sure we glue those, those surfaces and everything as well too. So anything critical that we're gluing, I will generally use high saw 9462 for anything critical. Uh, this is kind of my go-to. And uh, so that's what we're gonna be using to glue the horizontal stabs on this aircraft. So I'm gonna get this all ready, get it all glued in place. Uh, it's a pretty simple process, obviously making sure we glue everything. The final setup is gonna be taping it in place and getting everything uh, set and ready to cure. Um, that's gonna be the trickiest thing and we're gonna do it visually. We're gonna use our uh, measuring tools and things like that and uh, kind of do the best we can with getting them bang on accurate. All right, so we have used copious amounts of high sol to glue this in place. Now you can see the joint there is filled with high sol, which is perfect. So when I put these together, they squished on nicely and then I just took a gloved finger wipe this down and then I have another rag here with rubbing alcohol and then I just wipe that uh, that joint down with the rubbing alcohol and that cleans everything up so um, this is quite delicate right now and this one needs to be pushed on again but what I'm looking at here when I put these guys on is so hopefully I can show this to you so when you kind of pass your head down like that, you're kind of looking at the bottom of the surface. So I don't know if that's gonna show up. It's really close, but the leading edge of the left one needs to come up a little bit. So we've got a little bit of play here in these guys. So I can go like this, take this one, rotate it down. And then now when I run my head down like that, they are bang on even. So that's kind of what we're looking for. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna put some masking tape on this top edge to join these two together. Uh, and then I'm gonna check it and then I'll put some on the bottom and we'll leave that sit overnight to cure. Now I couldn't attach my extensions on here yet because they wouldn't pass through the holes we made in the vertical. So we've got them dangling there. There's enough to attach onto. Remember, we aren't putting anything in this area because we've got our elevator servos mounted there now. So that's just access panels at this point. So, and uh, this is a great time in the video to, uh, I'd like to thank each and every one of you guys uh, as your names scroll across the screen here that have donated to the shop build fund. Uh, it is very appreciated, very helpful in uh, all of our ventures here at the lighter side of RC. So uh, whether your donation has been big or small, 
We uh, definitely thank each and every one of you for those donations. It, uh, it's been awesome to see the outpouring of support and uh, it's pretty cool to see. So thank you guys very much for everything, for supporting the channel. We do very much appreciate it. There we go. So we've got our tape holding those guys together and that should be awesome. And then just to double check here, as we go down, we're perfectly level and I've already checked that stuff out, so. I will mention as well too, a lot of people send me a message and they say, hey, how do I donate to the Shop Build Fund? There's links down below in all the videos uh, on how to donate to the Shop Build Fund. So again, thank you guys for your donations. All right guys, and that's gonna be the end of this video for the MiG-15 EDF build. Uh, coming along nicely. Uh, trying to be as detailed as possible on this build, but also not have it take an excessive amount of episodes. So this video, basically what the success was, was getting the whole tale sorted out and complete. Uh, next video, we are gonna be working on the rudder and possibly getting the fan mounted. That's just kind of my thoughts on what we're gonna do, but uh, anyways, we also have to order a Unilight light setup for this plane. So that's gonna be coming as well too. And um, it's gonna be a nice, simple, uh, nice little setup for this tiny little, uh, little EDF. So anyways, hopefully you're enjoying something different on the channel. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below if you liked the video and uh, you wanna see more. So uh, it's free to subscribe and if you do so, you'll get notified when I release new videos. Um, when this video comes out, we're gonna be in the heart of Kentucky Jets, so it's gonna be a blast and uh, we'll have some highlights from that coming up as well too. So thanks for watching guys and we will see you in the next video.